Hello, and thank you for watching another episode here on CapTech. In this age of the internet equivalent of reruns, I have now combined two very popular videos of ours, 40 Things You Didn't Know About Southern Illinois, and 12 More Things You Didn't Know About, you guessed it, Southern Illinois, into this epic double feature. Thanks to our recent subscribers, we appreciate you. Shout out to everybody on TikTok as well as YouTube, and we look forward to coming out with some brand new content shortly. Like a trucker, I'm going to end this with a bit of a cheer. Whoop, whoop. Please watch CapTech. Hello, and welcome back to CapTech for this look at 40 things you didn't know about Southern Illinois. For those of you that want to skip ahead, we certainly understand. I would suggest uh, getting in your time machine a couple of minutes and jumping right into the Southern Illinois content. But for uh, those channel regulars, we're going to have a small section about dedicating this particular video. I wouldn't call them to the trolls, uh, but to the channel haters or the channel constructive criticism providers. These kids pulled up next to me the other day and were asking me about the metrics on my car. And instead of giving them performance metrics, I started talking about how little I paid for it, which kind of makes me feel old. But anyway, just want to say I know everybody's got their own opinion and looking at the at every video a little differently, so we do welcome feedback. But we still wanted to get our panel of Southern Illinoisans, ex-Southern Illinoisans um, related to the channel together and have a discussion about some of our more off-the-wall comments. From your left, let me quickly introduce our Southern Illinois panel that's gonna review some of our strangest comments to date as a channel. Uh, on your left, we have my buddy, Sean, me here in the middle, uh, my dad uh, to my left, your right, and then of course, Clanky here in the uh, Aussie cap. See you dressed up for this, Clanky. Anyway, let's get into it. Here are my favorite comments, son. Third place was the guy from the Marseille video that told you to get a life. Second place was the guy who said Illinois needed the capital I. First place was the Los Angeles guy taunting the St. Louis Rams fans. It seems you tend to offend people from Marseilles and Murfreesboro, Illinois. I thought you had some allies there. You might have to stay anonymous if you ever visit those areas. Hey. We all have our haters. Anybody can be random and call their self anything. Like a guy with a name like 123456 making fun of Ottawa, Illinois. I mean, at least this channel has a name and not just a number. Listen. If people tell you that you have an annoying voice, and then you find out they like Nickelback, you probably should not be too worried about their criticism. I think it could just be bad karma, because I've had some ah, average at best social media manners lately. A local microbrewery I became a little frustrated with. Anyway, how about the guy that uh, uh, posted about his men's IQ or how they discriminate against people with high IQs in Randolph County? I thought that was weird. It reminded me of something my uh, buddy Rockhard would say. You don't have to have an IQ of 128 to know it's a bad idea to get into a troll war with the locals. You should learn to handle criticism like Coach Ditka. He knew what to say. After all, you don't want to be banned from your favorite pubs. Well, let's see if I can get my confidence up high enough to still move forward, forward with this project and talk about 40 things you didn't know about Southern Illinois. Let's dive in, shall we? The first four are just about the gateway, kind of, to Southern Illinois, Alton. So number one, Fast Eddie's Bon Air has a storied history that dates back to 1921 when Anheuser-Busch decided to open their own drinking establishment. Second fact out of our 40, the barmaids in Alton don't always wear clothes. Third fact, Miles Davis was born in Alton. And fourth, the historic Museum of Torture Devices, also in Alton. Fifth, let's talk about the Civil War. Not everyone in Southern Illinois supported staying with the Union. In fact, there were even calls for secession in Southern Illinois. 
and as a precaution, Union troops remained in Little Egypt for a remainder of the war. In Marion, residents voted to secede from the United States. A few even volunteered for the Confederate States Army in Tennessee. 34 men were recruited from Jackson and William, Williamson counties and joined Company G, also referred to as the Illinois Company of the 15th Tennessee Regiment Volunteer Infantry. This is attributed uh, to the region's close cultural and economic ties to the South since many Southerners had migrated there. Um, however, the movement for secession soon fizzled after the proposal was blocked and shelved. The next few items are more geography related. After all, most doctors agree there should be zoning laws. And offensively or not, this brings us to Centralia, where you can put a house or a, tra a trailer next to a bar or fast food restaurant. Um, anyway, moving on to number seven. Uh, and I love you, Mount Vernon, but do you realize that you have a cemetery right there smack dab in the middle of your town, like right off of two major interstates in your prime commercial district? Again, I'm citing the zoning laws being quirky. For our eighth fact, do you know that Illinois has an exclave? Kaskaskia is actually lying west of the Mississippi. It still has an Illinois telephone area code, the great 618, which we'll get to later, but has a Missouri zip code, 63673. For your ninth fact, and I'm sure you fellows didn't know this, but Southern Illinois is home to two different clusters of adult nightlife. One in DeSoto, Illinois, where there's approximately one strip club for every 20 people or so, and the other in the Metro East. Your 10th fact is that Southern Illinois has drive through liquor stores. That's not really that surprising. Um, the surprising part that you probably didn't know is that 30 other states also allow, allow for drive through liquor stores. So enjoy the booze and cruise stuff. Number 11, did you know that in Southern Illinois, it's 2.5 hours to drive from one giant cross to the other giant cross? At 12 is the largest ketchup bottle in the world, which is in Collinsville, Illinois. But ironically, they don't have a ketchup festival that they're known for. They're known for a horseradish festival. 13, two out of the three capitals in history of the state of Illinois have been in Southern Illinois, Kaskaskia, and Vandalia. Not to mention, Southern Illinois was also home to Cahokia, the largest and most influential urban settlement of the Mississippian culture. So in a way, we've had another capital. Let's turn briefly away from geography and religion and talk about Southern Illinois abbreviations decoded. WAMAC, just south of Centralia, stands for Washington and Marion and Clinton counties, because that's where they uh, intersect. Um, Belleville Area College, the kids called Bring a Cran, or BAC, and then BAC changed its name, perhaps to avoid being called Bring a Cran, to when um, it began to be referred to as Still Writing in Cran. Um, that, that's, uh, this scene's been good for three Facts, you're welcome. 17. Ducoin, Illinois, is awesome. The 80s home and 90s home of the Street Machine Nationals. Um, they have their own state fair because the one are in uh, Springfield's just a decoy for the Northerners. Um, a bowling alley called the Ten Pin that I hope is still standing. And they also have a microbrewery now. Ducoin is awesome. At 18th and 19th, what the F happened to Cairo, and what the F happened to East St. Louis? Well, in East St. Louis, they had a lot of race riots in 1917, and that hurt their, uh, you know, what they had going on. And Cairo followed suit 50 years later in 1967. Now that we're about halfway through our list, just wanted to take a short commercial break to remind you that 
CapTech is your hometown custom-made video studio of choice. You can choose if you want traditional videos, whiteboard animation videos, or hybrid models. Please reach out to us anytime at captechstudios at gmail.com or captech on Facebook. Now on with our program. Facts 20 through 23 are kind of burning a hole in my head after the last video. They're on the Burger Shelton gang war. Fact 20, Burger shook hands with his hangman, who was known as the humane hangman, Philip Hanna. His final words were, it's a beautiful world. Fact 22, Berger's name entered the news again in 2006 when the granddaughter of the county sheriff who had supervised the execution sued the local historical museum in an attempt to regain possession of the noose used in the hanging. Uh, fact 23, Charlie Berger and the Shelton Brothers gang fought for control of the coal fields of Southern Illinois but their attention was diverted by a common enemy in the 1920s, the KKK, who supported national prohibition, with the, which, of course, the gangs did not. 24th, we have the Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival. This was a rock festival held on Labor Day weekend in 1972 near Griffin, Indiana, on Bull Island, a strip of land technically in Illinois, uh, but on the Indiana side of the Wabash River, a crowd estimated at 200 to 300,000 attended the concert, four times what the promoters estimated. Uh, food and water were in short supply, and the gathering quickly descended into anarchy. Uh, after the show was finished, uh, remnants of the crowd members burned the main stage. 25th. In southern Illinois, if you order a steak, it might be beef that you're going to get, but it might be a pork steak. This one's for the guy that doesn't uh, that didn't like my voice. At number 26, beverage of choice. Ski is bottled in Breeze, Illinois, right near Wally's Burgers, and Stag was brewed in Belleville. 27. Buddy Buddy not only had two first names and was mobbed up, Buddy was from Murfreesboro. Yikes! And if you already knew all those facts and don't want to give me credit for this one, and I know you're going to know some of these anyway, but uh, Al Capone was a furniture salesman on his business cards, but Buddy Buddy was a pinball operator. Bam! Factoids 28, 29, and 30 are about the 618 area code itself. Because I believe if God had an area code, it would be 618, but that's not a, one of the facts. All right, first, 618 was among the original North American area codes created in 1947, same year as my father was, same year my father was created. In 1954, most of Metro East switched from 217 to 618. Uh, second uh, 618 fact alone is 618 is the only one of Illinois, uh, Illinois's four original area codes never to have been split or overlaid. Um, under current projections, however, 618 uh, is expected to be exhausted by 2024. The uh, uh, supply of uh, numbers is limited because much of 618 is part of the St. Louis area and some exchanges in uh, Missouri's uh, 314 and 636 area codes are not available as 618 numbers either. And then uh, lastly on the 618 area code, uh, periodic proposals have been made for relief of, uh, of the 618 area code. Uh, the most recent proposal has uh, 618 being overlaid with the currently unactivated 730 area code. That's right, you could be calling Nashville, Illinois to Ashley, Illinois and calling somebody in 730 someday soon. All right, we're getting into the last 10 now. Fact 31, did you know SIU's Edwardsville campus? now has more students than the flagship campus in Carbondale for the first time. I mean, I like to stagger in and the 62025 as much as the next fella. And hell, with my old 
friends, you know, I have a soft spot for Cougars, which is their team name. But seriously, folks, the Cougar thing reminded me, so I'll go ahead and pick the low-hanging fruit. There have been rumors of panther sightings in southern Illinois, the animal, not the uh, political party. Two more facts on Dippin' Dots. Dippin' Dots is an ice cream snack invented by SIU Carbondale alumnus Kurt Jones in 1988. The confection is created by flash freezing ice cream mix in liquid nitrogen. Because the product requires storage uh, storage at temperatures below negative 40, uh, it is not sold in uh, most grocery stores as uh, most cannot meet such extreme cooling requirements. Um, the other fact on Dippin' Dots is it was founded in May 1988 in New Grand Chain, Illinois, although it is currently headquartered in Paducah. Speaking of Grand Chain, here's your 35th little known fact. It's a village in Pulaski County. The population was 233 at the 2000 census. That's not the interesting part though. The village's official name changed from Grand Chain to New Grand Chain in the 70s, but the residents currently refuse to adopt the name and uh, refuse to refer to it as uh, New Grand Chain. Fascinating stuff, huh? Probably got a few of you that knew quite a bit of these, but let's see if anybody knew this one. The real town of Metropolis is actually portrayed in one Superman comic book. Uh, Superman number two, 92 rather, in a story titled Massacre in Metropolis, um, which is continued into uh, Adventures of Superman 515, um, as a town whose citizens idolize um, what uh, what is to them the real life Man of Steel, a villain named Massacre arrives in town, having gotten lost and thinking he was in the other metropolis, the large city where Superman actually lives. So then he attacks the security guard, threatens many citizens, um, all in order to get proper um, directions to, you know, Metropolis, the real Metropolis. Well, the real one, at least from the comic book's perspective. Getting bored? So am I. So I've got the last four facts down to one scene. Uh, 37, the Goat Tower of Ba in Windsor, Illinois. 38, Henry's Rabbit Ranch in Staunton, Illinois, where the guy actually has rabbits like the cars and actual rabbits. Because I guess, you know, he kept thinking he was answering that question wrong and people would call, I guess. Um, the world's largest wind chimes are in Casey, Illinois. And uh, 40th, to round out the list, there's now a Dungeons and Dragons park in Carbondale. Thanks for watching Cap Tech, and thanks for looking into Southern Illinois. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Thanks again for watching, and please check out our new Southern Illinois playlist today. Welcome back to another episode here on Cap Tech. Today, since our most popular video to date has been things you didn't know about Southern Illinois, we're going to introduce a sequel entitled A Dozen More Things You Didn't Know About, you guessed it, Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois was the earliest settled and once the wealthiest part of Illinois. The first European settlers were the French colonists in the peace of their northern empire entitled Illinois Country. Only Illinois' claim to fame is its unusual population of albino squirrels. Casey, Illinois, which is high in my list of places to go next that I haven't yet visited, has the world's largest golf tee, the world's largest rocking chair, 
and the world's largest mailbox. They also have a place called Great House of Pizza, so that's cool. Then there's the Kaskaskia Dragon, which you can actually get special tokens to put into, and it literally blows fire. Check it out. There's more videos on it on YouTube. It looks really, uh, really cool. A little known fact that we have a dragon here in Illinois. We have a hippie memorial, which is actually in Arcola. I have not seen the memorial, but I'm gonna check that out as well. In my previous Unknown Facts About Southern Illinois uh, video, we talked a little bit about the Burger Shelton Gang War. But did you know where that took place in Southern Illinois, Williamson County? is referred to as Bloody Williamson due to several outbreaks of violence um, that have few equals in our uh, American history. These events include the Bloody Vendetta, 1876, which was an armed confrontation between families uh, during the uh, waning days of Reconstruction. The Carterville Massacre in 1899, the Coal Strike in 1906, the Heron Massacre in 1922, the Klan War in 24 through 26 all took place before the Burger Shelton Gang War of 1926. Williamson County, bloody place. The oldest bank in Illinois was chartered in Old Shawneetown in 1816. The Old Shawneetown State Bank has been restored now as a historical site. That in and of itself seems like a fairly boring fact, except Shawneetown comes up again in our next fact. The origin of the Little Egypt name, Dateline, 1799, Baptist minister John Badgley dubbed the Fertile Highlands near Edwardsville that's the 62025, for those of you not from the area, as, quote, the land of Goshen. Early Edwardsville was actually known as Goshen, a biblical reference to Egypt. Geographic features, such as the Mississippi and its floodplains, were also similar to the fertile Nile Valley. The Indian mounds of the area were large at the time and may have also seemed like the pyramids of Egypt. The nickname stuck and was reinforced by other events. Here you see the sign for the Goshen Road, which talks about it being a road that ran in a northwesterly direction from Shawneetown to Edwardsville. We've got two different Abraham Lincoln events before we get to our final unknown facts of Southern Illinois, little known facts of Southern Illinois, however you want to say it. Dateline, 1858, Lincoln ran for the U.S. Senate against incumbent Stephen Douglas. A series of debates was held in seven towns in Illinois, including Jonesboro and Alton. I raise this point because I record this in Otto, Illinois, and we talk often of the Lincoln and Douglas debates because we had one here. The next point, also on Lincoln, when Lincoln commissioned the Southern Illinois Democrat John Alexander McKernand as a brigadier general, he told him, keep Egypt right side up, meaning keep Southern Illinois in the north. Southern Illinois had become a center for the Knights of the Golden Circle, a secret group devoted to supporting the Confederacy. With rising concern about unarmed Southern sympathizers in August 1862, U.S. Marshal David Phillips arrested several Democrats who allegedly belonged to the Knights, including men in respectable positions like congressmen, state reps, and judges, such as Judge Andrew Duff. They were sent to Washington, D.C. and held for 68 days before release, but they were never charged. 
Democrats then won the state in the fall election. Next, George Harrison, the Beatle, in the 60s, visited Benton, Illinois. Our last fact that you probably didn't know about Southern Illinois is that if it became our 51st state in the Union, and there's a little uh, controversy as to where exactly we'd uh, draw the line to do that, but uh, figuring just on estimates, Southern Illinois would be our 42nd largest state geographically as a standalone state, and it's 1.2 million people would make it our 44th most populous state. Thanks again for watching Cap Tech. We appreciate it. Please feel free to comment and subscribe to our channel.